About three quarters of the sheep exported live from this country come out of Western Australia. For the Wormsley family, supplying the live export market is the entire focus of their sheep enterprise. We buy sheep out of sale yards um, all year round and we just fatten in the paddocks. There's no grain or supplement feed, it's all just on grass and usually every two weeks, two to four, or two weeks to a month, uh, we turn the sheep off back into the export market and total numbers of around about 30 to 35,000 a year. Current export volumes nationally run at around 4 million sheep a year. That's one in 20 out of the national flock. Getting it right is critical, and that starts with animal health, including vaccination for scabby mouth and protection from parasites. If we drench them straight away, um, then that alleviates one problem where our parasites are no longer, longer there. Um, and then we put them out and then hopefully they put as much weight on as possible. Prior to each shipment, export buyers spend up to three weeks sourcing sheep, drafting out any that are unsuitable to travel. It's most important for, 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 for our business to, to, to do the right thing by our customer at the other end and for the, for the health of the animal in general. That is why we do so much drafting in the, actually in the feedlot on farm, is to try and to, to better the, the quality of the sheep that are going on board to start with. So this is where the journey begins for these sheep, but it'll be at least five to seven days before they see the inside of a ship. The time between farm and ship is spent at an export feedlot. Straight after arrival, the sheep are drafted into groups according to weight, type and breed, and those that have more than an inch of wool are shorn. We shear because without the bulk of the wool, the animals have more room to move around on board. It also ensures that they have the most comfortable voyage and the most comfortable delivery to their destination because quite often they're going into a much hotter climate. For the next five days, life for these sheep is all about getting ready to travel. The feedlotting process allows for us to get the best possible outcome during the voyage, which is acclimatisation of the animal to that shipboard environment prior to getting on board the ship, allowing us to get a happy, healthy animal delivered to the other end, which is the best outcome for the animal and for the industry. Whether the yards are outdoor or sheds, a vital component of the feedlot phase is introducing the animals to their new feed. This feed's produced at our mill in Wongan Hills in the wheat belt of Western Australia using local WA ingredients. It is basically a 50% hay ration using lupins as a protein source and barley as an energy source with some salts and minerals. We use this feed for our feedlots, our ships, and we deliver it to our clients at the other end. The idea being that when the animals come into the feedlot, they become accustomed to this feed and it is the same fodder that is used throughout the whole of the live export process. Loading day is a precision operation coordinating the ship, the feedlot, trucks, aquas inspectors, stevedores, not to mention the passengers. Today at Fremantle, they're loading the MV Stella Deneb, bound for the Middle East under the command of Captain Laura Panasco. Animal welfare is our job. We were going to load 114,000 sheep and 300 bulls. And then there's the human cargo. An Aquas accredited vet, two Australian trained live export stockmen and a crew of trained Filipino stockmen. In all, 56 people whose full-time job is the care of the animals. My role on board the vessel is looking at uh, well, mon monitoring animal welfare and monitoring the sheep. I take responsibility uh, basically for monitoring and making sure the welfare of the stock is uh, looked after. We'll get up in the morning quite early and um, before, the crew, before the rest of the stockmen are up and uh, have a look around and make sure everything's gone okay overnight so all the animals have uh, feed and water and um, 
and everything basically looks okay. The feed troughs are, aren't all empty, water troughs are still clean. Uh, there's no obvious signs of any um, diseases or stresses or things like that. Within the pens, every day, one of the stockmen will walk through the pen, not just around the sides, but will walk through the pen to identify any sick or injured animals. And we'll take those animals and place them in a hospital pen. And then that gives me a chance during the day to work my way through all the decks and, and have a look at those animals and treat them as necessary. The reality is that the continuation of Australia's live export trade depends on maintaining and improving the animal welfare standards from farm gate to destination. Industry currently invests $1.6 million into research and development each year. Part of this program is looking at getting success rates even higher for the delivery of fit and healthy livestock to the Middle East. On this voyage, MLA-funded research will be seeking better ways to assess and monitor onboard animal welfare. So instead of just using mortality, which is a very basic measure of welfare, we're going to look at other assessment methods, things like the animal's health status, uh, accessibility to feed and water, um, room on board the ship, and overall animal behaviour. So there's a really strong relationship between good welfare and good product quality. So we're almost ensuring a good product if we protect the welfare of the animals throughout the production chain. MLA sees maintaining and demonstrating world-class animal welfare standards as a key contributor to securing the trade and benefiting all livestock producers. The livestock export industry is critically important to the uh, domestic livestock sector. It underpins cattle and sheep prices. It employs 13,000 people in rural and regional communities and it's worth $1.8 billion to the Australian economy.